Hey, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at Simbrief. So if you want to know how to create your very own flight plan from scratch, then I think you should stay tuned, because we got that coming up next, right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. So let's dive right in here and create our very own flight plan using Simbrief. Oh, and by the way, if this is your first time joining us on the channel, don't forget to go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. If this video does help you out today in any way, smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like yourselves. So to get started with Simbrief, the first thing you need to do is create your account. So after you've created your account, you will come up to a screen similar to this one. Now, if you don't have this screen in front of you, you just want to come right up to the top here and tap on the dispatch button. Now it will bring up this screen and we can start creating our flight. Now, this is not going to be an in-depth tutorial on how to use Simbrief and all the different nuances that come along with it. But we are going to show you a quick and easy way to create your flight plan from scratch so we can get you up in the air flying. Now, if anybody has any questions along the way, please post those down below in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Enough talking, let's get into this thing. So the first thing that we want to do to create your flight plan is pretty simple. Click on the button that says create new flight plan. Now, once you do that, it's going to bring us up a next screen. Now on this screen is your dispatch option screen. Now it can look a little overwhelming and a little daunting and you may not know what to do and what to add. There's only a couple key bits of information that we need to enter here. First, if you're in the US, the first thing you wanna do is come over here to units and switch that to pounds. If you're in the UK or anywhere else in the world, you can leave that on kilograms. The next thing we need to do is come right up here to the top where it says flight information. Now you don't need to enter an airline and you don't have to enter a flight number. Again, this is a simple tutorial, but what we do need to enter are the departure airport and the arrival airport. So for today's flight, we're just going to go from KMCF to KBWI. Now, when you enter that arrival airport, it may take a second for it to process, depending on how far away it is. Now, what it's also going to give you is an alternate airport here, the date and a departure time. Again, you really don't need any of that, but you do have to enter your airframe type. And this is going to be really important because it's going to factor in a lot of things like fuel burn, climb, descent, a bunch of different things that we're not going to get into on today's episode. But Let's go ahead and select an airframe for today's flight. And let's just say we're going to use a Citation CJ4. Hint, hint. Now, after you enter that in, again, it's gonna take a little bit of time to do some more calculations. And then underneath of that is gonna have the advanced aircraft options. Now, this is gonna have the climb profile, cruise profile, descent, fuel factor, a bunch of different things. Again, we don't need to get into any of that stuff. Now, below that is gonna be your optional entries. And here's where you can pick a schedule for your flight, departure, arrival, runway. Now, it is automatically gonna put the departure and arrival runway in here, depending on what's being used at the time. So again, it takes all this into consideration so you don't have to kind of manually figure that out on your own, like we've shown in a previous episode using little nav maps. And by the way, if you haven't seen that one, I'll post the link down below in the description, or you can click over here at the top of the screen and go right to that video right now. In any case, let's move on. Now you can adjust your passengers. It's set on auto. You can set your cargo, uh, a bunch of different things here, and you can even set extra fuel. Now I will get into this because some people may feel that they want to have a little bit of extra fuel on that flight for themselves. So all you would need to do is come right over here to where it says extra fuel, click on the down arrow, and then you can add however much extra fuel you want. Now, if you're unsure how to read this, when it says 0.5, that means 500 pounds of extra fuel. 
Oh, and the next bit of information you're going to want to have, if you're going to be using an aircraft that is implemented with SimBrief, that you can directly download that information into the FMC unit. So you want to make sure that you copy your pilot ID number down because you're going to need to put that in your FMC so that you can communicate with SimBrief. So underneath of that is the routing menu. Now, if you look over here to the right, there are a bunch of different suggested routes. And on this particular route, it's only giving us one. Now, if it did have multiple other routes, you can then click on these other routes and it will then populate that down here on the map screen. Now, also when you're clicking on these optional routes, right over here where it says analyze route, it will tell you the total route distance plus or minus so depending on if the route is a straight flight or it's got a lot of diversions in it, it will show under here the extra distance that you will be flying during that route. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. And if it doesn't, again, post it down in the comments and I'll try to answer that question for you. Now below that, we really don't have to enter any more information down here. So the next thing you gotta do once you have everything set up is to go back up to the top and go right over here to where it says generate flight. Now you're going to give that a big old left click and then hit yes. Now SimBrief will start to generate this flight plan for us. Okay, so now after it has generated that flight plan for you, now it's going to have a lot of good information in here that you're going to be able to use to take over to your aircraft. Again, if you're using an aircraft that implements SimBrief, then you really don't need any of this, but just for reference. That FMC will populate all this information inside for you. All right, so let's take a look at this so we can familiarize yourself with the summary here. So pretty much everything at the top here is going to have all of your basic information, the aircraft, the originating airport, the destination, the alternate, your cruise altitude. Oh, and by the way, it also sets in a cruise altitude for you based on what plane you're going to be flying. Underneath of that, it has your block fuel. The extra fuel we had entered in there was 500 pounds, the zero fuel weight and the takeoff weight. Underneath of that is gonna give our entire routing for this procedure. And then underneath of that are gonna be any remarks that we have. So now that we have taken a look at that, you can see the flight plan right here in the map menu. And then if we scroll down below that, you're gonna see all the different information here for this flight. Now, a lot of people may look at this and go, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm looking at here. Help me out, please. All right, so let's just break this down pretty easily. So if we take a look at the top right here, there's now again, this is all gonna be specifically created for the aircraft in which you're flying. It does give us the ground distance, air distance, average wind speed, and a couple other things here that you probably don't even really need to know. Over here to the left, it is going to give our takeoff and landing weights. This is kind of important because right here it says the takeoff weight is 16,234 and the landing weight is going to be 14,173. Above that is going to be the maximums that this plane can handle. So let's just scroll down here a little bit and now we can see the plan fuel menu. So you can go through each little bit of this and it will break everything down. The fuel you're going to use on the trip, the fuel you're going to use on your taxi, the takeoff fuel and the total block fuel, which is going to be right down below. So again, we don't really have to look at any of this stuff up here, but we do need to know the block fuel right here. This is going to be really important because that is where you're going to set the amount of fuel in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now we're just going to scroll down a little bit more and now we're going to come to the routing for today's flight. Now the first route you're going to see, and it's pretty self-explanatory, this is going to be the alternate route. So if we were going to be on the JFK, then this is the route we will be taking for that. But the one we're going to be concerned with is the main routing and that is going to be directly below that. Now it's going to have all that same information at the top, but it's also going to list the runways as well. So you see here, we're going to be departing on runway 04, and we're going to be entering runway 10 at BWI. And again, this will have all the different airways and the complete route on it for you, as well as the star, the SIDS, and the approach. So next, if we scroll a little bit further down, now we're not going to need any of this other stuff in there, but we want to come down to the weights menu. Now, this menu is going to be pretty important because this is where we are going to have the 
passengers loaded, the cargoes, and the payload that we're going to be taking on today's flight. Also, it has the zero fuel weight as well as the block fuel and takeoff weight. But the ones that we're more concerned with again are these right up here. So the passenger, the car, the passenger cargo and payload. Now this is also the information that you're going to use to set in your weights and balances in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it will have a couple different maps down here you can take a look at as well. They're going to have different winds, different isolated storms that might be in the area. And if you go all the way to the bottom, it will also have the top of climb and top of descent already mapped out for you. So you can already get an idea of when you're going to need to start to descend based on the waypoints here. All right, so I think that just about sums it up for SimBrief. If anybody has any questions, please post those down below in the comments. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell because you don't want to miss any future videos just like this one. And for all those who are unsure on how to import this into Microsoft Flight Simulator, click on the video up here. If you haven't seen our video on little nav maps on how to create a flight plan from scratch, click down here. Thanks everybody for watching and we will see you on the next one.